Hello everyone, and welcome to Colleen's Seeing Eye Dog vlog. The Colleen and Joplin Drew. I'm tired. It is 5.55 in the morning. We went out for park, which is where the dogs relieve themselves. And we came back in and we got our breakfast and our water. And we finished that real fast. And then mommy cleaned our bowls. And then mommy played with us. And we played with our Nyla Bone and our Kong. And now we're both resting. I'm resting while recording a video. And she's resting in her place. Which is what I call her condo. Which is what I call her crate. Uh, so, it's been a long week, um, but a really good week here at the Seeing Eye in Morristown, New Jersey. Uh, my name is Colleen, and I am visually impaired. I have a eye disease called cone rod dystrophy, which affects my retina, um, which means I'm going blind. Uh, so I wanted to get a guide dog, and earlier this week, I got to the seeing eye and you can um, follow along on my journey uh, if you subscribe to this channel. So feel free to subscribe to these videos. You can click the little bell to be notified. I do episodes when I can during this training and this is going to follow the process of me applying for, getting, and training with a seeing eye dog. I got Joplin a few days ago and she's a golden retriever lab mix and she is the bomb. She's a uh, wiggly though. She's a wiggly girl. Um, I'm excited because today I find out more information about her. So it makes complete sense but for the first week that you have your um, seeing eye dog they want to test you guys make sure you're walking together that you can work with the harness and the gentle leader and the leash, which I've talked about in previous videos and I'll address probably in later videos. They wanna make sure you, you can work well together, walk well together, do things together, um, and that you start to bond. You start to enjoy each other's company and nobody's too anxious or too nervous or um, that it's not working out. You don't find out any information about them until about uh, four or five days after you get them just to make sure that it's a good match and um, so I get to find out her birthday and how much she weighs and how tall she is and um, more about her litter and um, sometimes the puppy raisers so the people who raised her um, to a year old will write letters to whoever's gonna get her. So if my puppy raiser decided to document some things or write um, letters uh, to me as a graduate, then I will I will get to hear from the family some, some fun things about Joplin growing up. She's now doing this thing where when we play on the floor, she likes to sprawl out on her back and just be like, love me, which is pretty fun. And she's lean. She's such a lean girl. She's so fit. Mommy needs to step it up because she looks way more fit than I do. Another thing about today is our solos. So um, there's kind of three steps to a visually impaired person and their guide dog, um, which is called a team. A team to travel an area well. And it's called OCS, which is orientation, coaching, and solo. So when um, a graduate and their new seeing eye dog come to a new area, first is orientation, which um, you will go with someone sighted guide, which means that I am healing Joplin on my left. Heal means that I've dropped the harness and I'm just holding her leash and she's supposed to walk next to me and is not responsible for guiding. Sighted guide is where a visually impaired person is going to be taking their right hand and keeping a loose hold on your left elbow as you lead. Um, this would be because the dog is on our left and you can't be on that side anymore. 
right hand on your left elbow and you're leading, you're responsible for guiding and you're describing the area to us, letting us know, okay, now we're on Main Street. On your left, if you can smell it, is a Starbucks. And as we keep going down, there's a hardware store and a dress shop and a and you just kind of orient us. Okay, there's a you know a bunch of construction here, so they're gonna need to take you around to this and this, or this has a lot of trees on the sidewalk, and we're gonna keep going. And now you're on this street, this corner, you know, and just kind of orient us to the new area. The next one, the next step is called coaching, which is where um, the dog is responsible for guiding and is in charge of guiding in the area we just did. The person no longer does sighted guide, so the graduate and the dog are working with the harness and they're taking the route and you are directly behind, the sighted person is directly behind the graduate's right shoulder. So we are trying to do the route and you're coaching us. So you'd be saying, okay, coming up here was that right turn. Okay, you, okay, and then remember she's gonna have to lead you around this tree. Okay, um, there's a trash can up ahead in the middle of the sidewalk, that kind of stuff. Um, and then the last step is solo, which means that the graduate and the seeing eye dog are working in harness and they're going it alone. And you can observe from a safe distance so that you're not distracting the dog or talking to the graduate, things like that. Um, and then you can make sure we got the route down. So if you are interested in, in helping someone with um, a route that they wanna travel, it's um, orientation, coaching, and then solo. And you just watch the solo from a distance. And if something's going horribly wrong, you could step in. But other than that, it's important to realize that we know what we're doing. And people will say, well, it's only a dog. Like, they're going to run out into the middle of the road. Oh, my gosh. It's like, no, we got it. We know what we're doing. That's why we're in training for a month. Today should be interesting. It's my very first solo. So I've done orientation and coaching. And now today I'm doing a solo in downtown Morristown, New Jersey. So... It's our first solo, Jotham. What do you think? Are we going to do okay? She's napping in her crate again. This is not fair to Mommy. <sighs> I guess she has to pull me around, so she deserves a nap. <laughs> I will talk to you guys later. Hi, Joplin. You're my good girl. Hi, Jobs. You sniffing a chair? What's there? What's that? Hi, sweetie. He's that tail. Oh, tunnel. Hi, sweetie. You gonna go to your place? Hang out? Good girl. Good girl, sweet girl. So I just wanted to let everyone know that I just found out a little bit more about Joplin. Um, she is 21.5 inches tall and she's 45 pounds. She has a birthday on August 25th. So she was born August 25th, 2015. So she's not even two years old yet. He's my puppy girl. And she is a small girl um, for a guide. She's on the small side, but she's, she's a bad girl. She's awesome. So she passed anyway. Because she's awesome. That's my girl. That's my Japlin girl. So. Oh, epic sigh. Today's been really long. Both of us are really tired. We did pretty good on our walk. We got really confused by um, a church getting out. So there was a bunch of bells going off and tons of people were getting out of a uh, mass. Um, and that was one of the corners that we were used to just getting to and taking a left. But there was a ton of people and stuff like that. So we got a little disoriented and um, I accidentally uh, did an extra crossing. And my instructor came up behind us um, and was like, we need to cross back. You did one extra crossing. And I was like, oh. 
um, cause we got really disoriented. Um, but we did pretty good other than that. And we did our solo route. So it was just Joplin and I with my instructor observing. So we did pretty good. Um, and luckily today it wasn't raining. So that was nice. So Joplin and I are continuing to work really well and um, the instructors are very confident in our relationship and how it's building and everything and um, we're definitely sticking together. So uh, that's exciting. I don't have to switch my Joplin. Um, she and I are working out good and um, in a little bit we are gonna do some clicker training awareness and then I'll do the clicker training. So. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that when I know <laughs> more about it, but um, clicker training is like an accuracy and finding kind of game style thing for the dogs. So you have a literal clicker um, that makes a click noise and then you give an immediate kibble or you give a treat. So you show them the object that you want them to find or the destination you want them to find and you click and then give them a treat. Um, and you use a little target with a bell. So they have to find the object, hit it with their nose, and we are blind so um, we can hear the bell that they hit it and then we click and give a treat. And then we take the target off, we still expect them to find the thing with their nose, and we click and give a treat. And then it moves to we just click and praise and then it moves to just them making sure they point correctly to the object and then we just praise and then they will always be able to find that object. Um, so an example of that is like a button for a crosswalk. Um, you would clicker train them to find that walk pedestrian button. Um, so that they're always able to find that. And for some dogs, it'll just work for that one. But um, so far, Joplin's been pretty cool because um, her instructor told me that um, he said he's going to talk to me more about Joplin because my trainer didn't train her. Um, I got her from a separate string of dogs. Um, they showed her twice door handles and now she, with her nose, points out every door handle to me. She's never missed one. It was kind of cool. <laughs> so they showed her like twice. And then she's like, all right, got it. I will talk to you guys later after uh, some clicker exercises so I can learn how to do it. All right, who's paying attention from the last vlog? Who's paying attention from the last vloggy? You ready? Miss Joplin. I'm so happy she's half retriever. Cause guess what? Miss Joplin found mommy's sock. Oh, what? <laughs> you got away, you sneaky. You sneaky girl. You sneaky girl. Sneaky. Hi, pretty girl. Hi, pretty girl. Joplin, pretty girl. That's my girl. But uh, I thought I sacrificed a sock to the sock gods when I did laundry. Joplin found it. Or either that or she was keeping it and then showed it to me later. Also, I dropped my um, pill case that I use. So it's like a clear, small plastic that you can just put like one dose of your medication in and you can take it with you and it's not as like you're not carrying around like four prescription bottles. Um, so I dropped my pill case and I'm looking all around for it and she came out of her place. So she came out of her condo and she comes out and she crawls slightly under the bed, picks it up in her mouth, brings it to me. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. I was like, good girl, you found it for mommy. I was so happy and it's small and plastic and she held it loosely in her mouth. She brought it right to me. Oh, it was awesome. So she's a good girl and um, we did well in our clicker training. Where are you? There you are. You're being sneaky wandering around the room, sneakers. Yeah. 
Uh, we did good in our clicker training. Um, we had, uh, like I s explained uh, earlier in the video, the clicker training um, basically had a small rectangular clicker that I put my thumb on. And when you press down, it makes a click, click, like a loud pop noise. And um, so I have a little pouch on my right side. It's like, think Jack and the Beanstalk. It's like a magic beans, except it's magic kibble inside. And um, you have the clicker in your left hand, and you've got their leash as well. Um, and then you have a pouch on the right. And then you have a small red target with a bell on it. And every time you click, you give them a treat. So you start with um, just the concept of click, treat, click, treat, click, treat. And then you hold out the target and they hit the target with their nose and it makes the bell. As soon as you hear that bell, you click and you give them a treat. So they hit the target with their nose, click, treat. The concept is when they touch their nose to that spot, they're getting, they're hearing the click and they're getting a treat. And then you move on the concept from there. Um, and that's how you would train to find a specific object. And then after that, they're always gonna find that object. Um, so I'll probably use it for my doorknob to find my door in the hallway. And so she'll always be able to find my door or my chair in the dining room, that kind of stuff. She now has not sneakers for her sneakiness, booties. She has doggy booties, which is amazing. She's got doggy booties. Um, so they're little shoes because she has to go everywhere with me. Um, let's say in the winter time when they salt the roads, um, you don't want that salt, those chemicals getting on their paws. You don't want that, especially when they're out with you. So these are legitimately little booties that you put on your dog's four paws. There's no left, right, back foot, whatever. They all, they go on. And they're little booties and you put them on and then um, let's say the asphalt's super hot and you don't want them to burn the pads of their feet. Or like I said, you've got that salt or chemicals on the road or if somebody's got a lot of fertilizer or something like that, you can put the booties on their feet so that they can walk ease without having to um, get all disgusting on their paws. So she's got booties. So for the rest of today, we have a little bit of time off. So Joplin and I are just gonna chill for a little bit until dinner. Um, she's not feeling very well. I think she was stressed from today and we did a lot of obedience in the clicker and stuff like that. So um, we are going to, I'm gonna fast her tonight. So um, some people will be like, oh my gosh, you're starving your dog. That's so horrible. Um, but she had a little accident and she's feeling poorly, I think. So maybe just a little stressed out. So I'm not gonna feed her her dinner tonight. I'm just gonna offer water. And um, then hopefully tomorrow, she'll feel a little better. She's a sleepy girl. Sleepy jobs. Sleepy job, Lance. So we're gonna kinda take a break. I was thinking about doing like the leisure path with her or something, but we're both feeling kind of like stressed and kinda done for now with information. So um, she and I are gonna take a rest and um, then we've got dinner this evening and then um, hopefully a little bit of a break for the rest of Sunday. And then Monday we start up with a new route and mommy is gonna do for the first time blackout training which means that I will be wearing uh, blackout sunglasses so that I can't see anything and um, having her guide me on a route. So my issue, as many visually impaired people have, because the majority of people who are blind have some vision or they've lost vision over time, um, I have some remaining vision and your instinct, no matter how hard you try, no matter how hard you try, your instinct is to try and see. So um, you're trying, you know, your eyes are naturally like, what can we make out that will help us in our journey? Um, but actually with uh, having a guide dog, you could 
think something's coming up that's not there or you know you really want to follow and trust the dog and in order to do that you need to give up your control of sight so it's gonna be a challenge for me I know uh, and I'll let you guys know how it goes so once again thank you so much for watching uh, I hope you guys are enjoying Colleen and Joplin's guide dog vlog uh, please subscribe to the videos. You can click the little bell if you want to be notified when I post new ones. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to put them in the comments below. And like me, thumbs up, share all these videos. Uh, my goal is to raise awareness of visual impairment through my podcast and through this vlog and it's really important to me. So please feel free to share away as I... Um, raise awareness of the seeing eye in particular and um, have you guys follow along in a fun way my journey of obtaining my first seeing eye dog. So I will catch you guys later.